Well, once again, a very pleasant good afternoon and welcome back. Along with Jeremy Weathers this time, I'm J.J. Valentine, and of course we are continuing our coverage of the 2022 Colorado High School Coaches Association All-State Games. Well, we had the red win over the white in game one on the girls' side. Here we go with game two of the girls' side, and here's how they will go as we get ready to get underway. It'll be black versus blue. Let's meet the blue who will be going from right to left. Carly Godsey from Ray High School. Lauren Herman will be from Holyoke. From Briggsdale High School, Kylie Kreiss. From Eaton High School, is it a Hanna or Hanna Leffler? From Lahana High School, Sierra Reich played for David Mejia there. Riley Rodriguez from Sand Creek, just up the road along I-25. Callie Seamers from Heritage Christian Academy. Abby Tate from Bayfield from Holyoke will be Kristen Wieselmeyer. I hope I said that right. And Olivia Weathers, of course, from Lone Star on the blue team. And she is wearing number 31. So the black controls the volleyball, make that the basketball down the lane with a spin move is Michaela Espinoza from Skyview High School, a 5'9 guard. Let's meet the black team. Anna Beckett, Michaela Espinoza, Jalen Corby, Caitlin Kyle, Senea Martinez, Maya Mizek, Alexa Peraza, Jamie Quick, and Trista Tooley. John Baumgartner, Baumgartner, pardon me, of Holyoke, and Jessica Bird from Rock Canyon are the coaches for the blue team. Chris Kem from Skyview, as well as Roman Vargas from Skyview are the coaches for the black team. Quickly, 2-0 black. Deep three in the corner is off the mark and no good. Blue with a nice rebound down inside. Put back by Kylie Christ from Briggsdale is up and in, and we are all... Tied at two in an opportunity here. Did it go? Yeah, it did. That's what I thought. And the free throw is up there, missing. Oh, ball's tipped away and out of bounds. Going to be last touch by Black. And I believe off the fingertips there, number 12, Jamie Quick from Pritchett. Oh, nice move down inside by Kristen Wieselmeyer of Holyoke with the finish there. And it's now 4-2 in favor of the Blues. So we go back and forth. Three spot for Espinosa. Nope, kicks it out to the outside right there from Mizak. Espinosa now to the high right. Boy, she handles the ball extremely well. Nice crossover move down the lane. Kicks it out. Jumpers on the way by Kyle, and it is no good. And here come the blue back the other way quickly as Cries. She'll get it up ahead, driving left. Olivia Weathers, 5'6 guard from Lone Star. That just has a cool ring to it. Where are you from? I'm from Lone Star. I like that. Weathers has it up top. Down the lane she goes, has it knocked away and off her leg. That's a good job. Somebody just disrupted that dribble drive penetration right there. Didn't see who it was, but a defender reached in and got a fingertip on it. Forces the turnover. <clears throat> Volleyball action coming your way a little bit later. Long three in the air, missing off the back iron there. I think that was Martinez that fired that long three. That time it's going to be Espinoza chasing down the loose ball. Jamie Quick quickly gets there, lost it out of bounds. Good hustle. So it'll be blue basketball. Weathers has it outside left. Working it out up top there for Reich.
Nice pass down inside. Good job to take it right to the rack. Lauren Herman of Holyoke, 5'11 forward. Missed it, but an opportunity now to increase that lead. 7.20 to play here in the first. It's 4-2. And the first free throw is up there, good. Temperatures are expected to be on the warm side today and tomorrow, especially tomorrow. We could flirt with 100 degrees here in Pueblo tomorrow. So for the folks out north and northeast Colorado, not gonna bother them too much, but the kids coming down from the mountain areas Three tries in the air, it's off the mark, ball's tipped around. Weathers did a good job to tip it to her mate. Coming up with it there is Wieselmeyer, back to Weathers. Into the front court, nice no-look pass up ahead, layup up and good. Weathers to Kylie Kreiss for the finish. And it's eight to two, well played. Nice jumper from the left side up there and good by Senea Martinez. Senea from Northridge. Runner in the paint is off the mark, no good. Kyle kicks it out up top. Espinoza to the corner, got a whistle and a foul. Blue 22, says the referee, Sierra Reich at Lahana. A long three rims out, no good. Battle for the board, Espinoza comes away with it. She'll bring it out herself and reset. Martinez shoots the J, no good. Weathers streaking up the floor wide open. Nice job coming back on defense, but Weathers steals it back. She's got a two on two. Finds a cutter in the paint. We got a whistle and a foul. Mizak is going to be the guilty party there. The pass up ahead to Weathers disrupted, but she stayed with the play, didn't quit. Obviously, Weathers is one of the girls that understands the game of basketball, understands the role, where to be, where to go. I guess in a nutshell, a nose for the ball and a nose for the game. Second free throw up there is good, 10-4. So a little space, got a six-point lead now with five and a half remain. Espinoza, tough shot, got it to go around the defense. They're well played by Herman. Man, but that was a good finish at the rim. Rice fires a long J, no good. Backside rebound down to Espinoza. She'll bring it out herself, pushing up ahead. Peraza spots up, shuffled her feet. Yeah, she just took one step too many. A little case of happy feet. And I guess that came from the indecision of do I launch the three or do I penetrate and just gave it up. So 5-10 to play here. 30-second shot clock is what we work with. As Weathers driving left, tries to kick it. Ball's deflected, stolen away. Good job hustling back on D. Wieselmeyer with a jumper up, no good. Backside rebound down inside to Reich. Her putback is good. Great job, good use of the left hand for the finish down inside. Was that 20? Was that Kylie Kreis? Tough J is up there. It's no good by Anna Beckett. 5'7 guard from McClave High School. Beautiful pass down inside. 
And another good finish down low. That's Kristen Wieselmeyer. Her fourth point of the ball game. Nice penetration, but this ball stolen away. Sierra Reich. Adelahunna driving left with it, takes it up the floor herself. Now Weathers kicks it out. Herman up top. Now to Kreis, lobs down inside. Bieselmile turns, puts it up. No, didn't get it to go, but an opportunity to earn it from the charity stripe. Fouls charged, I believe, to number 13, Trista Tooley. 5'8 forward from Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Well, what a beautiful town that is. And if you're listening from outside the state and you ever get an opportunity, go way down southwestern Colorado. Pagosa Springs, they've got a gorgeous golf course that I've been dying to play there for years and have not gotten the opportunity. Every time I go there, I'm calling a ball game, so it's in and out. And in the winter. So a lot of times I need to, here's a nice layup back the other way by Peraza to get the finish from Skyview High School. Maybe just time to just take the wife on a weekend getaway and go play golf and fish. Backside rebound up no good by Abby Tate from Bayfield. Here's Espinosa in transition. Down to 3.08 on the clock. Espinosa spinning left, finds a seam, puts it up, no good, whistle foul. Somebody lost sight of her, and the defense got there about a half step behind and commits the foul. So Espinosa to the free throw line, trying to cut into that lead. It's 15 to eight. And she doesn't complete that mission, but she's got a steal and a breakaway. Now a two on one, she stops, kicks left side, bankers up and good by Peraza. Good job. Good communication there, Peraza coming over to help out. Long J is in and out, no good. Black in transition now. Back the other way as Beckett has it knocked away and stolen away. Here comes Wieselmeyer with it. To the high left, Rodriguez. Rodriguez has it tipped away. Wieselmeyer the loose basketball, and now we've got a whistle and a foul. Might be a loose ball foul. Nice banker in the paint. Kristen Wieselmeyer gets another basket. And Wieselmeyer with seven points in the ball game now. Nice penetration by Kreis, puts it up, offensive foul. I like the competition, but I really like the sportsmanship and the friendly competition. I mean, it's a showcase. These are some of the best of the players in the state of Colorado. Some elect not to come to this because of other commitments, obviously. Uh, a lot of these teams get on their, their summer travel team and they get on the road and they're gone on a weekend like this. Some of these guys will try to get back. Guys and girls will, I should say student athletes, will try to get back to make these types of tournaments if they've been invited. But a lot of times 
They're a long ways away from home. They ain't in Colorado anymore. I know a lot of teams that have already played a lot of games and school's only been officially out for a couple of weeks. Obviously, seniors get out a little bit earlier with graduation. We wrapped up baseball, state baseball, last weekend. Got a five-second call. Good job on the defensive end. Nice job d it up there by Trista Tully. Where Tully was getting deed up there, I take that back by Kreis. <clears throat> out of top, Kreis for a three. Rims out, no good. Long rebound to Mizek, and she lost it out of bounds. Good hustle. Coach comes over, slaps a high five or a low five, if you will, as does the referee. That's just good hustle points. Banker in the paint, off no good by Abby Tate. Black quickly back the other way, Beckett with it to the corner. A long three for Peraza, no good. Nice offensive rebound down inside, stick back. Up there and good. Trista Tully, the 5'8 freshman, make that 5'8 forward from Pagosa Springs. Peraza with it, makes a move on the baseline, finds a seam, scoop to the hoop. Yes, got it. Down to 13 seconds remaining here in this opening quarter. 17-14, got a three-point game. Down to three seconds, shots up, no good. And time will expire. We played one quarter of basketball. This is the second of our twin bill of the girls' boys to follow coming up in just a little bit. So stay close. Looks like that's Terrence Austin of Pueblo South over there getting loose on the wall. So we will... Step aside for a quick break. We'll be back with more right here. And again, 17-14, blue lead and black. We'll be back with more after this. Oh, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Speaking of balls of fire, walking, watching Terrence Austin of Pueblo South High School get loose. He's playing for the red on the boys' side coming up. Black and blue on the girls right here. 17-14, blue with the lead and the ball. Nice spin move, jumpers up just off the mark there by Olivia Weathers. Thanks, Jeremy, for the little nugget on the side as the rebound is down to Weathers, and she'll bring it out herself. Pushing up ahead, ball goes out of bounds. It might stay blue, and it should indeed. I was just made aware of the fact that Kristen Wieselmeyer of Holyoke High School, the Dragons, and Olivia Weathers, the 5'6 guard from Lone Star, will go to Concordia University, right? 
So not too far away from home. Was that semi by design? <laughs> so mom and dad can watch? <laughs> Without a doubt, right? Nice move to the hoop. Runners up there by Rodriguez. Riley missing underneath. Ball's tipped away, goes out of bounds. And it'll be black basketball. A long three. Espinoza knocks it down. And another three to answer. That's your good old-fashioned holla back right there. Espinoza with some penetration. We got a whistle, got a foul. So Olivia Weathers from Lone Star won four individual state track titles her junior year. Led the team to school's first state basketball appearance. She's going to go to Concordia University in Nebraska. Major in business administration. That's a girl after my heart. That was the, the route I took. And, of course, playing basketball and running track and field. So a two-sport athlete in college as well. Very well done. And I'm guessing all that athletic ability is coming from mom, I'm thinking. <laughs> and I can say that because dad is sitting next to me up here. Kristen Wieselmeyer, 2022 player of the year in 2A girls basketball in the state of Colorado. 2022 state champ as well from Holyoke. She's going to go to Concordia University and, of course, study exercise science as well as play basketball as well. So Spencer and Amanda have got to be proud, as are Jeremy and Kara, parents of the two young ladies. Nice little jumper from the left wing there by Caitlin Kyle is up there and good. Caitlin Kyle from Ponderosa High School. I have a sneaky feeling she's got a brother that played baseball. Nice jumper on the way, and it makes it 20 to 19. Blue by a point with seven, make that uh, four points, with 7.15 remaining here in the first half. Left wing Jay is up, missing short. Jamie Quick from Pritchett just missed. Reich makes a move on the baseline, has it knocked away, deflected away there by Jamie Quick. Play, and here's a three by Kyle up there and good. Weathers makes a nice move, created a little space for herself. Takes it to the rack strong and a good finish. 23, make that 25-22 blue. Espinoza's three is in and out. And here come the blue quickly back the other way. Weathers' first point of the game. I thought she had a bucket early on. Ball's knocked away, stolen away. Here's Espinoza going one on two. We got a whistle and a foul. I believe they'll charge Kylie Kreis with that, the 5'10 point guard from Briggsdale.
Espinoza and Wieselmeyer lead all scorers with seven points apiece. Chance to break that individual score tie, but she missed. Re-entering the lineup is Anna Beckett now from McClave. <clears throat> Pretty much out east from where we are. That second free throw is up and good. She leads all scorers with eight. <laughs> Whistling a foul back the other way as Weathers catches it deep on the block. Knocked away the ball as well as Weathers, and now it'll be remain blue basketball. Inbound play, Wieselmeyer out now to Weathers. She'll take a look inside, makes a move with the southpaw, spins and kicks it out. Rodriguez steps into the J and knocks it down. Good penetration. Got into the painted area with a nice kick. Like to call that the pen and kick. 5.25 to play. Nice backdoor pass down inside to Kylie. Tried to get it in the corner, lost it out of bounds, and it'll be blue basketball. They've got a 25, make that 27-23 lead, and the rock in hand. Weathers into the front court now, works to Rodriguez. Nice move, shake and bake. Into the painted area is Tate. In the lean in, jumpers up, no good. Ball's knocked away. It's going to be blue basketball. Nice job by Trista Tooley out of Pagosa Springs, battling hard. Just lost it. Rodriguez to trigger in. Levy Weathers with it. Has it knocked away and stolen away. She got double teamed. Here's Espinoza with it. Runner from the right side, no good. Battle for the rebound. Coming away with it there is Tully. She'll get it out up top. Here's a long three. It rims out, no good. Off the fingertips and out of bounds it goes. Weathers had an opportunity and just lost it on the rebound, pulling it down. Abby Tate on the blue team. First team all-conference basketball. 400-meter state qualifier. She said the future plans to follow as God's leading into business and, of course, go into business and be a dog groomer and boarder as well as a breeder. She wants to continue to stay involved in basketball as a coach and in an official. Got to love that. Need people with love for the game to stay close to the game and stay with it. Nice shake and bake move to shed the defense. Sierra Reich out there to Herman. A long three bullseye. That's a big time, Jay. 30 to 23 now down to four minutes and 10 seconds remaining here in the first half. Trying to answer that call. Kyle can't get it to go. Ball's out of bounds off the rim. Blue basketball. Michaela Espinosa from Skyview High School wears number two, point guard, five foot nine. Broke the 1,000 point mark, became the number one in Colorado history for most steals in high school girls basketball. And another deuce, good. 32 to 23 now. Tough shot, tried to force it, no good. Christ lost it out of bounds. Nice work on the defensive end from Lauren Herman out of Holyoke. So the black team would like to take a timeout. We'll take one with them. Actually, we'll keep it here. Anna Beckett, Adam McClay, wears number one. She's a 5'7 point guard. Played for Brianna Howe. Accolades for her, player of the league, team MVP. Future plans, on to college and study veterinary medicine. Her parents are Sean and Terry Beckett. 
Sonic driving in Lamar. McClave is just outside Lamar, Colorado and Southeast right by the Kansas border. Caitlin Kyle out of Ponderosa High School is the Ponderosa boys. Last weekend, last Saturday, won the 2022 Class 4A State Baseball Championship, beating the Cheyenne Mountain Red-Tailed Hawks. Played for Coach Corey White, first team all league, 21 and 22, first in state with 88.8% free throw percentage. Future Plans wants to go to Park University in Gilbert, Arizona to continue playing basketball while pursuing a degree in sports management. So Rick and Christy Kyle are parents that got to be proud. Maya Mizak from Kiowa. Played for Rick Carruthers there. Accolade, you got uh, my nurse aid license through Arapahoe Community College while she was in high school. And uh, a GPA of 4.0. Wow. Future plans going to college. Majoring in biomedical sciences with intentions of becoming a physician's assistant. Gotta love that. 32-23. Blue controls the basketball now, moving from left to right, as you can see there. Nice pass down inside, straight to the basket goes Kylie Kreiss, and she missed it, but does earn a trip to the free throw line. Six points for her, two fouls to go with it. And she missed. Think about a lot of these student athletes that are here. Some of the boys basketball players play baseball, run track. Girls do the same as they will run track. Lacrosse, sports like that as well. So some of them still in a basketball mode but others coming off of their other spring sports. Anna Beckett driving left, missing. A battle for the rebound, coming away Reich. Bringing it up the floor herself. Nice move, lobs back door, catching, releasing, no good, whistle and a foul. Beautiful pass, got it down low to Kylie Kreis, took it right to the basket and missed. So Christ will find her way right back to the charity stripe. Again, seven points, two fouls. Free throw, missing off the back iron. And she missed the second one as well. See a lot of video cameras and phones, a lot of devices out there, but minimal on the cheering side. The crowd get, kind of gets into it every now and then. Nice little left wing jumpers up and good. Sierra Rice from Lahana played for David Mejia down there. About 60 miles out east from where we are on Highway 50. Caitlin Kiley with it, Kyle rather. Nice give and go as I think it was Peraza there and trying to see who her mate was. Thirty-five twenty-three, blue with a lead, and we are on the back side of the first half at one thirty-five. Here's a steal and a breakaway. Martinez wide open layup, up and good. Sine Martinez from Northridge High School quickly back the other way goes to the basket as Kristen Bieselmeyer gets it and one.
Wieselmeyer with nine points in the ball game, no fouls, and a chance to get into double figures, and she does, gets the double digit. Number now, 10 points in the ball game. Down to 115 to play. Espinoza works to the outside. Kyle with it there. High left, Martinez, a long three, takes a high bounce. No good, blue rebound. Pushing up ahead is Reich. Driving right there is Seamers and missed it. Got a whistle and a travel backside rebound down there to Sierra Reich, who just couldn't keep her footing. Peraza calling for it now as the pass out of top 40 seconds. Now Espinoza. Nice no look pass. Low right side gets it down low. Jumper up there and good by Martinez and got it. Down to 25 seconds. Wieselmeyer controls. Not for long. Tries to look to the corner. Ball goes out of bounds. Turnover, so 23 seconds. So the shot clock is off. It just goes with the game clock. 23.5. I don't see any reason why not to put one in high school basketball in regulation. I'm sure there are reasons, but nice move down the lane. Scoopers up and good there by Michaela Espinoza. And she'll commit the reaching foul. But there's only been through one and a half games of basketball that I could see that I think there was only one or two chances at a shot clock violation. Enter Chris Bruman. We'll be handing the reins over there. How goes it, Boomer? And the second one is up there and good. 40 to 29, got an 11-point lead, eight seconds remaining. Peraza has it, not for long, knocked away with one second on the clock. That'll do it. First half has come to a close. 40 to 29 is the lead. We'll step aside for a quick break and, of course, be back with second half action as the red and white on the boys' side will take to the court and warm up. For the next few minutes, we'll be back with more. You're watching live coverage of the All-State Games presented by the Colorado High School Coaches Association.
Well, once again, welcome back as we get ready for the action. And again, blue and black, the girls taking to the hardwood 40 to 29. And again, you are watching live coverage of the All-State Games presented by the Colorado High School Coaches Association. You know, great tribute, great honor to see a lot of the kids here that had great careers in high school and getting ready to move on to other things like Michaela Espinosa, we talked about her from Skyview. And of course, she's the, broke the 1,000 point mark, became number one in the state of Colorado in history for most steals in high school girls basketball. And again, she's committed to playing basketball at Metro State University. You gotta love that. Staying close to home. Maya Mizak from Kiowa. And again, we talked about her. She got her nurse's aid license through her Arapahoe Community College. And of course, a 4.0 GPA is planning on furthering the education coming up in the fall. So that's one thing about high schools. And for several years now, these, these programs have just expanded on the vocational side uh, to where you can have a two-year degree uh, by the time you graduate high school. And as you can see, some of these student athletes are taking full advantage of that. So now the black with the basketball to get things started. Nice dribble drive penetration to the rack. Good finish there by Michaela Espinoza. Boys action will come your way here from Masari Arena and Harry H. Simmons Court. Chris Baruman, my partner in crime this weekend, will have the play-by-play -play coverage of all that. Him and Jeremy Weathers, you're staying here, right, Jer? You're on the hardwood, and of course, we'll take to the volleyball court coming up after this when we'll make our way to the student center. They've got a nice, cool volleyball court with track and everything in there set up. Nice follow shot by Weathers. Thought she might have been fouled, didn't get the call, but quickly back the other way it comes Mizak. She'll take the pass back, lays it up and good. Wow. So a very productive halftime, if you will, for the black team. Cut the lead to 7, 40 to 33 now. Reich misses, and now here's Espinosa with not so much numbers, but spins in the paint, gets a double teamed, looks for help, kicks it out. Martinez, she'll let the three go, no good. Lauren Herman chases down the long rebound. And Kyle knocks down the nice little jumper. Jumpers off the mark there by Anna Beckett. Weathers was open. I think if she lobs that pass, she can catch and release. She tried to go straight at her, and Michaela Espinoza deflected it away. Last touch by Blue, it'll be black ball. <clears throat> Started things off with wrestling this morning. Basketball here, volleyball to come. Then we cap the day off with football, believe it or not. So again, a lot of these student athletes have been here for the last couple of days. Nice turnaround jumper up there and good. It's good work inside there by Senea Martinez. Weathers tried to sneak it in down inside there to Bieselmeyer, went right through her hands and a turnover. Rodriguez down the lane, lays it up and good. Make that uh, Martinez lays it up and good. 42-37 with 7.25 remaining. Shot is up and we're gonna shoot a pair. And in your program there, Boomer, you might want to take a look at the rules. Did you see the rules on the basketball? Just check that out because I had a curveball thrown at me. I was like, what are we doing? There's more time on the clock. <laughs> I 
Now I'd heard the heard of the rule, and it looks like we've got an injured player over there, and I think when she came down underneath, or did she injure her shoe is what it is. Yeah, she just slipped right out of her shoe is what it was, because I saw her kind of lean down, but I thought she doesn't look hurt. <coughs> So Kylie Kreis, 5'10", point guard from Briggsdale, <clears throat> will go to the free throw line. And the first one is up there. It is good. Makes it 43-37 with 7.23 to play. Hustling quickly back the other way is Martinez taking it coast to coast, lays it up and good. Nice deflection, good defensive play there by Espinoza. She'll push it up ahead, trying to find quick, slashing up the floor, can't get it there. Mr. Mark. So Masari Arena. And Harry H. Simmons Court is the site. And of course, the All-State Games, Colorado High School Coaches Association All-State Games here in 22. Espinoza with good dribble drive penetration, got it down inside. Shot deflected there as Martinez went to the basket. Rodriguez back the other way, kicks left corner. Reich along Jay, no good. Backside rebound down inside by Lauren Herman for the putback. She's going to go to the South Dakota School of Mines and technology to play basketball, major in. Industrial engineering. So when she's done, what a career ahead of her. Wow. Here's Reich low left. The kick out, Rodriguez spots up for the three and missing short. The rebound to the backside, Kreis put back no good. Whistle, ball's knocked away. Actually last touch by Kreis. I thought there might have been a foul on the play or but the ball was blocked. So the referees will talk about it inside. Good man. South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. She's going to play basketball and uh, major in industrial engineering. Well, wow. played for John Baumgartner at Holyoke. 4.0 GPA state championship in basketball. So a lot to add to her credit. I knew they might overturn that call. I thought it was deflected. Three try in the air off the mark there by Herman. We got a battle for the loose ball whistle and a foul. It's going to be a black foul, so that'll be Rodriguez to trigger in. Peraza will check back in the lineup. Peraza checks in, as does Jalen Corby. Three is up there, in and out, then kicks back through and good. <laughs> Rodriguez knocks one down from the corner and a big time three. Nice little shake and bake move, splash. Yeah, Martinez handles the ball very, very well. Nice touch on the shot. Five minutes remain down the lane with a runner up there by Cries. No good whistle and a foul, but Jalen Corby enters the lineup. 
Prospect Ridge Academy is where she's from. Wearing number three, she's a guard, also a shooting guard, standing five foot five inches tall. <clears throat> Her accolades, well, she's most valuable player in the CCGS, all-state uh, participant as well. Uh, plans to go to my old school, Northeastern Junior College, and continue playing basketball and major in business. That's exactly why I went there, played a little baseball, NJC. She's going to become a Plainsman or a Plainswoman, I guess. <laughs> it was cool to go back and check it out as the free throw is up there and good and see all the improvements. There's very few things. Some still look exactly the way they were when I was there back in the early 80s, and some things have changed big time. <clears throat> Facilities are off the chain over there in northeastern Colorado at Northeastern Junior College. So, all right, Jalen Corby. Nice pass down inside and a good finish at the rim. Kylie Seamers with the finish down low, down to four and a half remaining here in the third. All runner, little scoop to the hoop, and yes, Alexa Peraza. Another steal, Peraza's wide open, driving right, lays it up and good. Both teams have had their share of runs and on a long three is no good. Long rebound to the black. With it is Maya Mizak. Beckett's gonna shoot a long three and no good. Future veterinarian there, studying vet medicine. Nice job staying with the play there, and the shot on the follow didn't go. But she will earn a trip to the charity stripe, does Kelly Seamers. 5'7 from Heritage Christian Academy. Played for Joe Packard there. Second free throw up there and good as well, 53-45. 3.38 remain in this one, third quarter. Those football rosters, you found them. <laughs> Was volleyball starting at 2 o'clock? Okay. So that is underway at the student center. We got a whistle and a tied up basketball. Good hustle back the other way by Jalen Corby. Future Plains woman there. Coming off the bench, contributing there, especially on the defensive side. Coaches love that. Nice pass and a good move, a little floater. I'm not sure if she was looking to lob the pass down inside or softly shoot it, but it comes up short and empty. And here's Peraza with the basketball. The kick out Beckett. She has it knocked away. Loose ball grabbed by Martinez. Her floater off the glass, no good. A little bit of contact, no call. Racing for the loose balls, Herman. And she has it stolen away by Peraza. She stepped on the baseline and turns it over. Boy, everybody, good hustle finishing the play.
Martinez already has 14 points in the ball game. I believe she leads all scores. Bieselmeyer kicks to the corner. A wide open seamer, she missed it. Beckett with a long rebound and pushing up ahead. Oh, Peraza with a sweet move and it didn't go. Oh, that Euro step gave herself, created a little space and the ball just rimmed out. Is that rim bent? That could be why it didn't go. <laughs> there is a timeout called for. Right now, 53-45 with 1.54 to play here in the third. And over at the rec center, the volleyball is underway. Boys action is coming your way here in just a bit from Masari Arena and Harry H. Simmons Court. Don't forget, we cap off the long day that got started at 9 o'clock this morning with wrestling with football tonight. 7 o'clock will be the introduction. 7.30 is the kickoff. Chris Bruman, we call him Boomer and myself, will be on the the call of that one so it should be a lot of fun tonight so what great action that's coming your way in the all-state games again it's the Colorado High School Coaches Association all-state games 2022 student athletes from all across the state convening here in one location at Masari Arena and the campus of Colorado State University Pueblo so that timeout comes to a close Going to start to gather some gear here and get ready to, to make a exit. As soon as this one is over, I'll turn things over to Boomer to get ready for volleyball and then, of course, football tonight after it's all said and done. You're watching live coverage of the girls action. Boys coming up, we'll go back to back with boys. We've gone back to back with girls. And then of course we go to the football field tonight. To the Thunder Bowl. Blue controls the basketball. Bieselmeyer kicks to the corner. She finds an open Herman and she rattles a three home. That's a much needed bucket, it'd been a moment. It's a much needed bucket for the Blue. They still lead at 56-47. And we're less than a minute and a half to go. Tough shot up there by Beckett, can't get it to fall. And here come the Blue back the other way. Herman the basketball. Up ahead, Wieselmeyer, down the lane. A little one-handed shot, the runner's up no good. She tips it out to a mate. Rodriguez faking a three, now lets it go off the mark. Shot was contested there by Peraza. And a backside rebound on the putback up there and good. Well played by Abby Tate. Another three try in the air, no good rebound. Seamers. And she's going to be fouled in the front court there by Martinez. Non-shooting violation, so set to trigger in will be Riley Rodriguez from Sand Creek High School. Played for Kimberly Spillman there. 60 to 47 on the bucket there. Now 13-point lead with 15 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. Shot up, blocked away. Olivia Weathers with the block. Now from my vantage point, it was clean. If it's 31, that means she got her with a body on the way down. Weathers with her first foul of the game. A pair of points to go with it. <clears throat> And the free throw by Peraza is up there and good. Second free throw, she got it. Oh, 
Quickly back the other way. Weathers with a nice finish and time's gonna expire. That's how you close out the third quarter. It's on to the fourth we go. We'll do it after a timeout, 62-49. Blue leads black. We're back with more of the All-State games right here after this. Well, it's on to the fourth quarter we go, and we are quickly underway. 62-51 is the lead. Rodriguez, does she have a holla back? It's in and out, no good. Defensive rebound, racing into the front court now is quick. She'll push up ahead. Here's Kyle for three, bullseye. Rodriguez out of top. Tate down the lane, kicks to the corner now. Cries, lets the jump for go, no good. Rodriguez with a backside rebound, lets the J go. Got it. Just inside the three-point mark. Well played. 64-54, got a 10-point lead. Don't forget the Elam rule is, will be in effect. Three try by Espinosa's short. Rodriguez now up ahead again to Cries. Nice penetration by Weathers and a good dish down low. Shot blocked, whistle foul. Weathers with good dribble drive penetration, little pass down inside as she snuck it inside. Got an open look for a mate. Defense got there late and commits the foul. So Tate at the free throw line takes aim and missed it. <laughs> so we'll redo it. Very nice to have you along. My name is J.J. Valentine. So 825 remaining here. <clears throat> Whistle got to travel. Good defensive work.
And again, the Elam ending rules, the game clock is turned off at the first whistle under four minutes remaining in the game. So the teams then will play to a target score. That target score is eight points more than the leading team's score. If they're tied, then it, the point clock is, uh, is stopped. The winning shot can be a field goal, three-pointer, or a free throw. That's how that Elam ending rule will go. So at the four-minute mark, now we're four minutes away from that. We're exactly 7.59 remaining. in the contest, but again, then the Elam rule, they'll first whistle under four minutes, will stop the clock, and then they go to eight points. So if it's at this point in time, if it were to go now, so it'll be a 72 point score, it would be the target score. That's what we would be aiming for. 7.35 remaining here. In the fourth quarter, Espinoza takes it strong to the basket, splits the defense. That's either going to be on Wieselmeyer or Weathers. College roommates and teammates. Olivia Weathers will be going to Concordia University in Nebraska. Join us tomorrow morning. Of course, I'm, I'll be leaving as soon as this one's over on this girls' side of basketball. I will be leaving and headed to the rec center. To provide the play-by-play -play coverage of volleyball. Weathers had the near steal, or the loose ball rather. Nice little follow shot is up and good. And another steal, Rodriguez with it. 7-10 to play. Trying to get around the defense, out to Weathers up top. Takes a look from downtown. Didn't pull the trigger, driving left. Has it knocked away, loose ball grabbed down inside. Shots up and good by Reich. A long J in the air and up there and good. Michaela Espinoza from way downtown. Sierra Reich ends up on her backside and helped up by her mate, Olivia Weathers. Couple of subs now for the black team checking in. Number five is Senea Martinez from Northridge returning to the lineup. Inbound play to Wieselmeyer. She retrieves the loose ball. Here's Weathers, makes a move on the baseline, spins away and lost the handle, stolen away. Espinoza got a two on two, drive and right, dish and left. Shot blocked away by Weathers and Wieselmeyer. So with 6.24 to play, the clock has stopped, 68-62. We're a little more than two minutes away from that four-minute whistle. <clears throat> Weathers driving right, has it knocked away and stolen away by Peraza. Kicks it out up top. Espinoza faking the three down the lane, dishing left side, shots up, whistle foul. Well, they were looking forward to shoot the three as I was. She gave it a nice head and shoulders fake and then 
Started with the dribble drive penetration, got to the right side, drew defense there, dish left. That'll send Trista Tooley to the free throw line. Her first free throw is up there and good. Second free throw good as well. 6.06 on the clock. And again, now we're two minutes away. From the first whistle closest to the four minute mark. Here's Weathers down the lane, kicks to the right side, layup is up and no good. So the defense has stepped up a notch, gone to another level for the black team. Here's Espinoza down the lane, runners up and she missed it, got her own rebound. Kicks it out, Peraza with it. Step back three, no. A battle for the rebound. Peraza battle in there with Kylie Seamers from Heritage Christian Academy. And the possession arrow is going to go blue way. 68-64. Seamers out up top with it. Gets double teamed. Has it knocked away, tries to sneak it down inside. We got a whistle. I think we got a foul. It's going to be a loose ball foul, and it's going to go against Blue. <clears throat> and that is the case. Down to 5 10 to play here. Timeout taken on the floor. Don't forget, boys action coming your way. It's going to be red and white, then blue and black. That'll conclude the basketball portion of the All-State games. Not much of a break. There'll be a slight break in between basketball and football. That We'll have that for you coming up tonight. Volleyball is already underway at the rec center. I will leave there and make my way over. You got him up and running over there. So bat, make that volleyball is up and running. That's girls volleyball. We won't see boys volleyball here this year at the All-State Games, but I'm guessing that you we might see that in the near future because boys volleyball concluded its second year, and it was nice to have the, the honor and the pleasure of broadcasting that state final weekend in boys volleyball. And if you've never watched high school boys volleyball, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's it's great competition. It's fast. It's powerful. Well, we're 60 seconds away from that four-minute mark. Espinoza spins in the paint, kicks it out. A long three in the air, missing off the back iron. Shot missed there by Martinez, and here come the blue. <clears throat> Cries with it. Runner in the paint's up, no good. A tip back won't go. Weathers trying to save the loose basketball. Can't quite make the play. And down to 445. And again, the way that Elam rule closes things out is they play to a target score. So after the first whistle, closest to the four-minute mark, they'll stop the clock and then play to a, a target score. Nice crossover. Missing, but a loose ball grabbed and put up again. And that is... Seneo Martinez. Little jumper from the left wing. The Blues gone cold for the last couple of minutes. Struggled to get a basket. They've had opportunity, they've just not cashed in. Chance right here to take that lid off. First free throw is up. It is good. That's Lauren Herman. 5'11 forward from Holyoke. Former Dragon. Yeah. 
Second free throw missing. Here comes Martinez taking it coast to coast and finishes 69-67 with 4.02 on the clock. And the first whistle will signify the start of the Elam finish or the Elam ending, if you will. Espinoza. Now Corby to Kyle for a three, and it's no good. Herman with a rebound. She'll bring it out herself. Down to 340 to play. Got a whistle. Got a foul. Collision there. Wieselmeyer involved in that collision, and that's going to be Trista Tully, the 5'8 forward from Pagosa Springs. Okay, so they just went straight to the drop dead <laughs> time on the clock. They'll put 30 minutes up there. But so eight points, so it'll be 77 is our target score. And there's the first basket right there, 71. 71-67. So the first one to 77 then is how it'll go. Is that Coach Shannon Lane to my left coming up the stairs over there? It is. 71-70 now. To the left corner, open for three is Kreis. Tries to get it inside, she does. Down low, Herman puts it up and in. So we could see an exciting finish here, 73-70. A long three back the other way. Martinez can't get it to go. Rebound to Corby and a whistle and a timeout called for. 28-49, that's the longest we will play this game to, but it's the first one to 77 now and a three-point advantage for the blue team. Boys coming your way. That'll be the red and white followed by the black and blue later. Chris Baruman will handle the play-by-play -play duties of that. I'll make my way to the student center for a little girls volleyball action there. Then we'll play football tonight. Seven o'clock, the festivities get underway. We'll kick it off at 7.30. And then join us again tomorrow morning, bright and early at nine o'clock for more volleyball that'll transition into basketball. So we'll go volleyball, third place and final. And then basketball, third place final girls, third place final boys, I believe. I'll have to look at the exact schedule, but it, it might alternate third place, third place, and then final, final. So what a week, an exciting week for these student athletes. You've heard a little bit of the information about some of these kids that are making their way on to college, further the education, further the career whether it be basketball and athletically or something else So the black with plenty of time, actually two seconds on the shot clock. I meant to say plenty of time in the game, trailing 73 to 70 and a three in the air is off the mark. Backside rebound, put back, won't go. Again, another stick back that won't go, but an opportunity from the free throw line and who ends up there is Kylie Kreis. Couple of big free throws right here because again, the target score is 77. First one to 77 is the winner. 
Free throw is up, and it is good. Gives it a four-point advantage to the blue. Second free throw up coming for Kreis. 5'10 out of Briggsdale. She missed it, but a backside rebound down inside to Herman. She puts it up and in. And now 76-70. Well, if the blue can get it, their next basket is a winner. Here's a three, got it. Big time three for Caitlin Kyle. A whistle and a timeout called for makes it 76-73. And again, the time you see there at 27-54, that is the long, they would end the game even if it was whoever was done. With the score was 76-73, that's where the game would end right there. That again, just to keep the tournament somewhat close to being on pace. I think we're very close to being somewhat close to on time. <laughs> With that timeout, and again, volleyball is on right now as we speak. So again, the red and white boys action coming away after this. I'll gather up my mess, get it out of the way, and make room for Boomer. That's Chris Baruman, who will handle the play-by-play -play duties coming up. After this. So Blue will have it right here with an opportunity to close it out. Rodriguez bouncing up ahead. She'll take the pass as a scoop back from Kreis. Nice job defensively. Rodriguez down to 17 seconds on the shot clock. Down inside. Bieselmeyer turns, fires, and got it, and that's how the game will end. 78-73. So the blue wins over the black. So they'll play the red tomorrow in the final. The black will play the white in the final or make that the third place game here at the 2022 All-State Games presented by the Colorado High School Coaches Association. My name is JJ Valentine. Thank you so much. You're gonna turn things over to Chris Baruman and of course, Jeremy Weathers. They'll handle the duties here from Missouri Arena. I'll make my way over to the volleyball courts in the Student Center here on the beautiful campus of Colorado State University Pueblo, the site for the 2022 CHSCA All-State Games.